The Untouchables, a TV series from 1959, is a gripping story about law enforcement officers fighting crime in Prohibition-era Chicago. It's known for its daring raids and the relentless pursuit of notorious gangsters. This show has brought many surprises to viewers, from funny moments to shocking twists and even heart-wrenching scenes. While I don't have personal experiences or memories, many viewers have found inspiration in the courage and determination shown by the characters. Some scenes like the intense confrontations between Elliot Ness and Al Capone have left a strong impression on fans, highlighting the struggle between good and evil. Now, we're curious about your connection with The Untouchables. What's your most memorable experience related to this series? Your stories and memories are important to us, and we'd be thrilled to read about them in the comments below. Keep watching, as there are many more fascinating facts to come. Front. We'll get rid of Halloran later. Hey, look at that. The television series The Untouchables, which premiered in the 1959-60 season, marked a significant shift in television history, often considered the start of a new era of quality programming. Its black and white presentation and compelling musical score contributed to a distinctive, serious tone that many found appealing. The show was known for its dramatic portrayal of law enforcement and criminal activity, though it often depicted violence without the visceral impact that modern audiences might expect. This approach to violence, common in television productions of that era, avoided graphic depictions in favor of a more sanitized presentation. The series also inspired several television movies in the 1960s, including The Gun of Zangara, which continued to explore themes and characters from the original show. Overall, The Untouchables has left a lasting impression on the landscape of American television. Jerry Fanning? Yeah, that's me. What Newberry do to you? Why are you riding on him? Walter Winchell, a notable figure in the entertainment industry, has been depicted by various actors across different films and television specials. Stanley Tucci took on the role in the film Winchell, while Joseph Bologna portrayed him in Citizen Cone. Joey Foreman brought the character to life in the Scarlet O'Hara War, Craig T. Nelson in the Josephine Baker story, Michael Townsend right in the Rat Pack, and Mark Zimmerman in Dash and Lily. In another connection to television history, Gavin McLeod, known for his role on the Mary Tyler Moore Show, passed away shortly after his co-star Cloris Leachman. Following the end of the Mary Tyler Moore Show, McLeod was selected by Aaron Spelling to audition for the lead role of Captain Merrill Steubing on The Love Boat, a role he accepted and became well known for. Federal men having problems? What brings you here, Captain? Philip Pine stood out for his roles where his character's identities were taken over by others with the power to alter their appearance, showcasing this unique plot device in two notable science fiction series. Meanwhile, the portrayal of Elliot Ness diverged from historical accuracy, depicting him as an FBI agent rather than his true role as a Treasury Department agent. Additionally, Gavin McCloud established a memorable on-screen partnership with Ted Lange contributing to the dynamic and chemistry that audiences came to enjoy. Like this so you couldn't get rid of me. I'm the one who's gonna lead you to Johnson in the dough, so you better play now. Joe Turkle, known for his character roles, penned his memoir The Misery of Success, which hit the shelves in 2022. Robert Stack, initially slated for a leading role in The Proud Ones, was replaced by Robert Ryan before the film's 1956 release. In a heartwarming reunion, Gavin McLeod joined forces with Jill Wellen, his former co-star, to officiate a record-breaking vow renewal event. This 2020 gathering saw 1-443 couples reaffirm their commitments across three ships, marking a world record for Princess Cruises. You, sir. You were the eyewitness in the uh, Volpe and Raddy killings, weren't you? Yes, sir. One of them. The other... Murray Hamilton's career included roles in five films, now preserved in the National Film Registry for their significant cultural, historical, or aesthetic contributions. Gavin McLeod, known for his later television roles, initially considered auditioning for a different character on the Mary Tyler Moore show before choosing the role of Murray. Meanwhile, Walter Winchell, known for his rapid-fire narration, earned a substantial fee per episode and was capable of delivering nearly 200 words per minute, adding a unique dynamic to the show's storytelling. The owner of the Kentucky Derby favorite, Enchantment. On April 20th of that year, Miss Carton watched the loading up. In a startling revelation, Elodina Frisino, a former mafia boss who became an informant, 
disclosed that the Chicago Mafia family once plotted to kill Daisy Arnaz. They feared the show's success was drawing unwanted scrutiny toward their operations and negatively depicting Italians. The plan involved hitmen staking out Arnaz's residence, but they never got the chance to execute their orders. Recognizing the potential backlash, the Mafia ultimately called off the hit. Negotiations with Italian-American organizations led to a compromise where actual Italians and their names could be depicted only if they were historical figures. To avoid further controversy, any made-up criminal characters would not be Italian. The show also took creative liberties with historical figures. It portrayed Frank Nitti as the successor to Al Capone's criminal empire. However, it's widely believed that Nitti was merely a front, and the true power behind the throne preferred to operate in the shadows, unlike the flamboyant Capone. Gavin McLeod, a prominent television actor, holds special regard for certain episodes of The Love Boat, particularly those featuring notable guests like Van Johnson, Carol Channing, and Cab Calloway, as well as episodes that introduced Jill Whelan's character and those shared with Marion Ross. Despite his significant role in television, McLeod has not received an individual star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, an honor that The Love Boat itself has been awarded. Celebrating his 80th birthday, McLeod was joined by the cast of The Love Boat, friends and family aboard the Golden Princess cruise ship in Los Angeles, where he was surprised with a large three-dimensional cake shaped like the original Love Boat, the Pacific Princess. Arthur, I don't understand this. It's good timing anyway, honey. Why did you get me to break? In the landscape of television, actors often cross paths with history in unique ways. Gavin McLeod, known for his role as Captain Merrill Steubing, took a nostalgic trip down Colorado Boulevard during the Pasadena Tournament of Roses Parade, steering a float that paid homage to his time on the love boat. Meanwhile, Paul Picerny's service as a bombardier in World War II saw him undertake 25 combat missions, earning the Distinguished Flying Cross, and notably, he was part of the mission that destroyed the bridge later depicted in the bridge on the River Kwai. Murray Hamilton brought to life the character of Big Daddy, Blanche Deverwa's father on The Golden Girls, leaving a memorable mark in the show's first season before his untimely passing led to David Wayne stepping into the role. Each actor's journey reflects a tapestry of experiences that intersect with pivotal moments and cultural touchstones. Yeah, I got it. In the landscape of television history, connections and family ties often run deep. Gavin McLeod, known for his later role on The Love Boat, first crossed paths with Bernie Copel on the set of The Mary Tyler Moore Show. This encounter paved the way for their future collaboration. Meanwhile, Paul Picerny, a father to eight and grandfather to ten, extended his family's legacy in the entertainment industry by introducing his brother Charlie to Hollywood. Charlie Picerny not only stood in for Paul, but also carved out his own path as a director and stunt coordinator for major action films. This family's involvement in film and television didn't stop there, as many relatives followed in their footsteps, contributing to various facets of the industry. The passing of Nicholas George had marked the end of an era as he was the last of the main cast members, leaving behind a rich history of storytelling and performance. Stones, you were saying the shots came from a black sedan. In the landscape of television, actors often cross paths with various roles that become notable in their careers. Joe Turkle, recognized for his memorable performances in The Shining and Blade Runner, also contributed to the television series in question. Gavin McLeod, another familiar face, notably did not join his former castmates from the Mary Tyler Moore show in a guest appearance on Hot in Cleveland, despite the participation of other regulars. Gene Roth, whose career included a range of character roles, was set to appear in The Cure, but his part was ultimately not included in the final cut. These actors' journeys reflect the unpredictable nature of the television industry, where roles can become defining or remain unseen. You could squeeze the buffalo off a nickel. <laughs> in the landscape of television history, certain actors stand out for their unique backgrounds and contributions. Michael Constantine, known for his Greek-American heritage, was born to immigrant parents from Greece. His father, a steel worker, and his mother, Andromash Fosciato, instilled in him the values of hard work and perseverance. Gavin McLeod, remembered for his role in the Mary Tyler Moore Show, was one of the last surviving members of the original cast. 
His passing marked the end of an era for the beloved series. Joe Turkle's career was notably marked by his collaborations with director Stanley Kubrick. He appeared in three of Kubrick's films, a distinction he shares with only one other actor, Philip Stone. These individuals brought their distinct talents to the screen, leaving a lasting impression on audiences and the industry alike. In this area, everything else is canceled. You all have your assignments. That's it. Joe DeSantis brought a unique blend of artistic talents to his acting career. Educated in sculpture and drama, he shared his knowledge by teaching both subjects. His sculptures gained recognition, with one notable piece being a bust of Walter Hampton, which remains on display at a dedicated library. DeSantis was also deeply involved in the theater community, contributing as a teacher and member of prestigious clubs in both New York and Los Angeles. Walter Winchell's influence extended beyond journalism into popular culture. His name became synonymous with the latest news, often referenced in songs and musicals. His presence in lyrics, from Broadway to Billy Joel, shows the breadth of his impact on American entertainment. In the transition from pilot to series, continuity was maintained with Robert Stack and Abel Fernandez reprising their roles. Their return provided a sense of familiarity amidst the changes, anchoring the show as it moved forward with a new cast for other characters. I just don't know. All I know is that... In the portrayal of law enforcement characters, casting choices often diverge from historical accuracy. For instance, Agent Youngfellow, depicted as a Cherokee from Oklahoma, was played by Abel Fernandez, a Latino actor. The show took creative liberties with its source material, a book co-authored by Elliot Ness and Oscar Fraley. While the book primarily described the agent's efforts against illegal alcohol operations, the show expanded their activities into numerous fictionalized scenarios, with a contemporary observer noting that very little of the show's content reflected actual events. Additionally, actor Murray Hamilton stepped into roles previously held by Lou Antonio on Broadway and Gene Hackman in the film The Graduate, showcasing the fluid nature of casting in the entertainment industry. I don't get me wrong. I was looking for Embry. Dirty little punk. Make no Television in the 1950s was a landscape of rapid change and evolving standards. The Zillu Productions, a pioneer in the industry, faced restrictions on language reflecting the era's conservative values. Despite these limitations, the show managed to address mature themes, using the term prostitution openly in its episodes. Gavin McLeod, a notable actor, passed away at the age of 90, shortly after the death of Norman Lloyd at 106. McLeod's career spanned various roles, including a character on the Mary Tyler Moore show that bore a resemblance to Lloyd's portrayal on St. Elsewhere. Beyond his acting career, McLeod served as the ambassador for Pacific Princess Cruises, connecting his on-screen role as a captain to his real-life advocacy for the cruise line. How do I know you won't squeeze me again? Don't worry. As soon as I get it, I blow this town. In the landscape of television, friendships and connections often extend beyond the screen. Gavin McLeod, known for his role on The Love Boat, maintained a lasting friendship with co-star Ted Lange. Their bond exemplified the camaraderie that can form within the industry. Michael Constantine, another familiar face to audiences, shared his life with Juliana McCarthy, and together they had two children, Thea Eileen and Brendan Neal, who carry on their family's legacy. Meanwhile, Robert Stack left an indelible mark on the industry through his portrayals of significant historical figures, bringing to life General Joseph W. Stilwell, John Paul Jones, and the legendary lawman Elliot Ness. These roles not only showcased his talent, but also enriched the tapestry of American storytelling. Wait, last year his income was $50,000. That answer your question. Maybe he was lucky with the horses. Ah, he was a broker between... Gavin McLeod, known for his role on The Love Boat, shared a close bond with his co-stars, which was evident when Jill Whelan invited him to her wedding in 2004, an event also attended by Bernie Koppel. This camaraderie extended beyond the screen, as seen in 22 when McLeod attended the funeral of Robert Urich, with whom he had worked on Love Boat the next wave. His connections in the industry date back to the early days, like when he met Joyce Bulifant on the set of McHale's Navy. Their on-screen chemistry was undeniable, leading them to later portray a married couple on the Mary Tyler Moore show, further solidifying McLeod's status as a familiar television presence. Hello, 
Okay, okay. In the casting process for the notable crime drama series, Robert Stack emerged as the final choice to portray the lead role of Elliot Niss, although Van Johnson and Van Heflin were initially in consideration. Walter Winchell, who lent his distinctive voice to the series, had previously been parodied in classic animations, taking on the personas of Walter Finchell and Walter Snitchell. Following his tenure on the popular series, The Love Boat, Gavin McLeod, alongside his wife Patty, dedicated 17 years to hosting Back on Course, a program aimed at supporting couples through marital challenges, broadcasted on the Trinity Broadcasting Network. People are gonna think about the holy untouchables. Huh? And just how? In the landscape of television, it's not common to find a series that defies the traditional sequential narrative. Yet, this particular show does just that, playing with time in a way that allows characters to meet their end only to appear in later episodes. This non-linear storytelling is exemplified by the character Frank Nitti, who meets his demise early on, but continues to be a part of the story in subsequent seasons. The series also serves as a crossroads for talent, connecting actors across different shows and eras. Gavin McLeod, known for his later role as a newswriter, first crossed paths with Mary Tyler Moore on a classic comedy show, setting the stage for their future collaboration. Moreover, the series has ties to real-life figures, with Walter Winchell serving as the inspiration for a character portrayed by Burt Lancaster in a film from the late 1950s. This character, though only loosely based on Winchell, brings a touch of authenticity and historical reference to the series. The operation. In the early days of television crime dramas, actors often crossed the line between hero and villain. Nicholas Georgiade, known for his role as Enrico Rossi, initially appeared as a small-time criminal, showcasing the fluid nature of character assignments in the industry. His character's bold taunt to the protagonist resulted in a memorable altercation, highlighting the intense confrontations that define the series. Nehemiah Persoff, another veteran actor from the show, later gained recognition as one of the oldest living actors from the Star Trek universe, a testament to his long-standing presence in the entertainment field. His longevity, along with that of Marsha Hunt, marks a significant milestone in television history. Walter Winchell, the voice that brought urgency and gravity to the series, had a personal life marked by both success and sorrow. His early separation from his wife and subsequent family life with June Maji was shattered by personal losses, reflecting the complex realities behind the scenes of the golden age of television. Richard Bakalian began his acting career portraying troubled youths, reflecting the era's cultural shift. His notable early work includes leading a gang in The Delinquents and a similar role in The Delicate Delinquent. Transitioning from these roles, he established himself as a character actor, often seen as streetwise individuals or comic villains. Frank Wilcox left his mark in cinema history by featuring in three films that won the Best Picture Oscar Gentleman's Agreement, All the King's Men, and The Greatest Show on Earth. His contributions to these acclaimed films remain a significant part of his legacy. Gavin McLeod, before his prominent role in Hawaii Five-0, shared the screen with Jack Lord and Betsy Palmer in The True Story of Lynn Stewart. This role showcased his acting skills prior to his success on the iconic police procedural series. I'm not quite sure if I know what you mean. The Blue Poodle, Benny. Murray Hamilton's career included roles in four Oscar-nominated films, showcasing his range as an actor. Robert Stack, known for his commanding screen presence, had a childhood filled with interactions with Hollywood's elite, shaping his early experiences in the industry. Michael Constantine's talent was recognized with a Drama Log Award for his performance in Temptation, highlighting his skill on stage. Each actor brought their unique experiences and accolades to their roles, contributing to the rich tapestry of the show's history. You want me to close up that nose of yours for good? What girl are you talking about? I thought you knew that. Casting for the lead role in the classic series saw several prominent actors considered. Van Heflin and Van Johnson, despite being approached, decided not to take on the role of the determined law enforcer, Elliot Ness. The search for the right actor also led to Fred McMurray, Jack Lord, and Cliff Robertson, who were all in the running for the part at different points. In a separate development, Gavin McLeod, who later became known for his role on The Love Boat, first crossed paths with Marion Ross during the stage play Operation Petticoat. 
Their professional relationship would be rekindled years later when Ross joined him on the love boat, portraying his character's wife. McLeod's journey to the captain's chair on the love boat was bolstered by the support of television producer Aaron Spelling, who encouraged him to take the lead role. In the landscape of television, actors often cross paths with a variety of roles that showcase their range. Robert Stack, known for his authoritative presence, is documented in the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives, highlighting his career and contributions. Nehemiah Persoff's career includes roles in significant films that explore historical and religious themes. Gavin McLeod, recognizable for his portrayal of Captain Merrill Steubing, brought the character to life across multiple television series, demonstrating his adaptability and audience appeal. These actors, each with their unique path, have left a mark on the industry and continue to be remembered for their work. Hey, Al. Hold it. In the history of television, legal challenges have not been uncommon, and one notable instance involved the heirs of Al Capone who sought to halt a series, claiming it profited from the notorious Capone name without authorization. Meanwhile, Gavin McLeod, an actor who found fame later in life, launched the beloved series The Love Boat at the age of 46. He had already become a familiar face to audiences through his roles as Murray Slaughter on The Mary Tyler Moore Show and later as Captain Merrill Steubing, steering the love boat into the hearts of viewers across the globe. That's just the point, it hasn't. The kennel's quiet, the dogs are eating out of the same bowl. Meaning? In the early 1960s, Richard Bakalian formed a significant bond with Bobby Doran, leading to a regular role on Darren's television show. This friendship lasted until Darren's untimely passing. Meanwhile, Daisy Arnaz's production company, having already established a strong partnership with CBS, faced rejection from the network for a new series despite a successful pilot. The decision by CBS executives led Arnaz to approach ABC, where the series found remarkable success. On screen, Bruce Gordon's portrayal of Frank Nitty left a lasting impression, although the real Nitty was notably shorter in stature. All the years I've lived in Clearview, this is the first time I've ever been in this place. Well, it is... Somebody told me it was... In the landscape of television history, certain actors stand out for their consistent presence. Gavin McLeod, known for his role on The Love Boat, was a staple on the show, appearing in every episode. Meanwhile, in the crime drama series, Agent Jack Rossman was a regular character, featured in 64 episodes, yet his presence was often silent, with minimal dialogue. Paul Peisterny, another familiar face, had a unique distinction of appearing in the trailer, but not in the actual film of the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. He's and rotten, and he handles 30 to 50 hoods as vicious and rotten as he is. He's smartest of the... Two actors connected by their roles in early television shared the same final day, February 27, 2015. Richard Bakalian, known for his work in various productions, and Leonard Nimoy, both featured in an episode titled The Boston Kid, left a lasting mark on the industry. In another interesting link to the past, Frank Wilcox, who appeared in numerous episodes, was once used as the pre-surgery face of Humphrey Bogart's character in Dark Passage, a 1947 film noir. Paul Peisterny, another regular, reflected on his diverse acting experiences, including his role in The Scalf Hunters, in a 2012 interview, providing insights into the challenges and triumphs of his acting career. These connections highlight the intertwined paths of actors within the classic era of television and film. Now my girl's over there and she's waiting for me. Can I leave? Let's go, Marty. In the landscape of television history, personal lives of actors and societal reactions to content often go unnoticed. Nehemiah Persoff, an actor from the classic series, faced a personal loss with the passing of his wife Thea Persoff in 2021, after a remarkable journey of 70 years together. The series itself was not without controversy, drawing criticism for its portrayal of Italians and Italian-Americans, sparking debates and challenges from various groups. Meanwhile, Gavin McLeod, another prominent figure, served as an inspiration to Ted Lange, who admired McLeod's work before joining him on screen in later years. These narratives reflect the complex interplay between personal experiences, public perception, and the influence of television on future generations. Yeah, here was a guy from Cleveland who pushed him. 
efficient. I gotta give somebody this town's... In the landscape of television history, certain actors stand out for their unique career paths. Gavin McLeod, known for his role on The Love Boat, holds the distinction of being the sole cast member from that series who never appeared on Fantasy Island. Meanwhile, Nehemiah Persoff shared his life's journey in his memoir, The Many Faces of Nehemiah, released by the Autumn Road Company. Adding to the off-screen anecdotes, Richard Backlian faced an unexpected encounter with law enforcement. While filming The Cool and The Crazy, he and Dickie Jones were mistaken for actual gang members due to their convincing attire and were arrested for vagrancy, leading to a mix-up that took hours to resolve. These instances reflect the unpredictable and often surprising experiences of actors beyond the camera. Let's go, sunshine. In the bustling corridors of Radio City Music Hall, Gavin McLeod's life took a romantic turn when he met his future wife Joan, a dancer with the iconic Roquettes. Their marriage spanned 18 years and was blessed with four children. On screen, McLeod found fame beyond his early roles, notably as the beloved captain on the love boat, which later paved the way for his association with Princess Cruises. Addressing the sensitive cultural portrayal in television, the show introduced agent Enrico Rossi, played by Nicholas Georgiade, to present an Italian-American in a positive light, countering criticism and showcasing diversity in the fight against crime. And if I don't land a stinking folly someday, it's cause you're a stinking manager. Harrington will never let- Gavin McLeod, known for his role on The Love Boat, commanded a salary exceeding 20,000 per episode. His popularity was evident during a book signing at Barnes & Noble in New York City, which drew the largest crowd in three years, with former co-stars Ted Lange and Loretta Swit in attendance. Meanwhile, Nehemiah Persoff's acting prowess was recognized with the Los Angeles Drama Critics Circle Award in 1975 for his supporting role in the Dibbuck at the Mark Taper Forum Theater. How are we, Jerry? Mr. Ness has never heard of again. What are the people going to think about the 